Okay, this is going to be rubric development, and this is for the EMS instructor course. And my name is Roy Smith. Um, topics we're going to discuss here: uh, rubric definition, uh, discuss the purpose of a rubric, general overview of a rubric, uh, creation of a rubric, and this would be grading examples and grading criteria. And then we're going to actually do a rubric together, or actually give you a good example of a rubric. So first things first, rubric definition. Rubrics are the key to effective measurement of student learning outcomes. And why that is, is because a rubric clearly defines the tasks and assigns a grading criteria to each. Rubrics make subjective assessment easy and concise. When provided to students before, and that means that you have to give it to them before you actually assess them on it, uh, during learning and during learning, rubrics also assist students to more successfully interpret and anticipate expected levels of performance. Cognitive, psychomotor, and effective evaluation is standardized with the use of a rubric, so knowledge, skills, and behavior all can be assessed with a rubric. Purpose of a rubric It helps the students, and it does this by clarifying the instructor's expectations Give, gives a way to pl uh, plan assignments whenever you're looking at it, nice, nice and structured. Uh, encourages self-direction and allows all grading criteria to be known up front. It helps instructors by clarifying expectations and it gives a platform to plan assignments on. Uh, provides a fair way of grading subjective information. So like fair use and practice on this. So general overview, whenever we look at a rubric, it has a couple areas here. So these are performance tasks or performance attributes in this section. And then this up here is the level that we're going to assess them at. So whether it be level one, level two, level three, level four. And in this area, what makes this a level one score. Now we can do multi a multitude of things here. We can a a assign a term to this or we can assign a specific value to this. And I'll, I'll show you as this progresses here. So this is what makes the score of a level one. This is what makes the score of a level two and this is what makes the score of a level three and a level four in this performance task. Performance attribute or performance tasks. The number and type of rating skills and attributes are determined based on the objectives and standards of the performance task. So how many parts and pieces do we have for this, this task that we're looking at grading here? Performance attributes are generally in the first column and define what's being graded. So that's what we just got through talking about. They're over on the left-hand column. Performance tasks can be written on a paper, an oral presentation, daily classroom attendance, participation, attitude, disposition, practice performance, professional roles such as a musician, athlete, counselor, attorney, teacher, scientist, mathematician, dot, dot, dot. Include descriptions of the performance on the exam or portfolio. Now, what this does is this defines what you're actually grading. What sections, if you're, if you're, if for an instructor's viewpoint, it defines what item that you're actually grading. And then in those other sections that we looked at earlier, which I'll review back here with you really quick, the levels identify how much value, um, that section has and what numbers will be graded for that section and I'll, I'll, as we progress in this it will make it a little easier whenever I'm, I'm showing you this. So what we just got through talking about there is the performance attributes or performance tasks and these are going to be the assessment levels. Alright. Performance attributes. Now these things are that we're talking about here are essentially three different areas. So, example, uh, integrity, which is an effective trait, 
behavioral, performance, which is psychomotor, and then this is going to be a combination of all three, which will be cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. Again, these are the performance attributes, and generally go in the first column. So the next thing that we're going to do is take a look at the performance levels, and that was these sections up here. <coughs> An example, this would have been integrity. Well, how good was the student's integrity? Was it level 1, level 2, level 3, or level 4? And that's what we're fixing to talk about next here, is this section right here. So whatever your performance attributes or performance task, generally go here in this first column and in this direction. Performance levels. A performance level defines the proficiency of the task and generalizes the scoring for that attribute or that task. Performance levels can be pass or fail. Criteria needs to be agreed upon whenever making performance levels and we're going to talk about this a little bit more. What The question that should come to mind is, is what will the rubric be used for? Now, gatekeeping, and gatekeeping would be entry-level job competency, uh, showing developmental growth, and whether the actual student progresses or they do not progress. Achievement, that they have increased their knowledge level or have increased their achievement in these ways here. But that, again, is a performance attrib attribute. Um, measured learning that they've attained this knowledge, this knowledge, and then this knowledge, and have been assessed in these areas. So again, very simply, figure out what your performance levels are. In the performance levels, they can be graded in a multitude of ways. And I'm going to just give you an example of this here. So level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4. Now this can be running in increasing score or increasing progression or it can run this way here. So if they're a level 4 student this could be advanced. In the same breath it could also be poor. So this could be a level 1 student instead. So it doesn't matter how we run these levels just as long as we're standardized. If that makes sense in the way that we are running them. So these are examples of performance levels. On the top row we're actually running in this direction here from basic to advanced, if you will, or beginning to advanced. In uh, the second row here, row one, row two, in the second row here, we're running in this direction, from poor all the way up to excellent. And this row here, we're also running the same direction, level one versus a level four student, in row three. And in row four, now we're running in the opposite direction. So however you set up your rubric, it is, it's irrelevant, just as long as it's concise with the rest of your rubrics that you've made. So the number of levels. Uh, if you have it on three levels, uh, good or bad, okay, and good are examples of the levels. Uh, good, better, and best, novice, intermediate, and expert beginner, advanced, beginner, and then target. Uh, you could even go one after target and put advanced into this section here. This would be more along the lines of a of a, a four level though, but in three levels, that's what we're talking about here, approaches, meets, exceeds. That's a one that we see quite often. Uh, four level assessment, very bad, somewhat bad, somewhat good, very good. So this may be your cutoff score for your assessment. Um, fair, good, better, best, novice, advanced beginner, intermediate, expert, beginner, advanced beginner, target, exceeds target, are distinguished. So 
very simply this number of levels figures out what your scoring criteria is for each one of those. Description of a performance at each level. So for the student is able to and then description of advanced performance you would like here. So this is this is where all the information comes into play. So what do you want the student to do at level four? That's what would come into play here. And that's what that means right there. So all of that information be able to apply traction uh, to a, a splint may be the task level for this. Uh, three, the student is able to description of what proficient performance would you like, um, but not yet able to completely excel. So this would be off of a four level here. This one here is middle of the road. Proficient yet probably needs a little push on this level here. Level two, the student is able to describe of what the basic performance would look like, but yet not able to describe description of proficient proficient performance. So they're almost there. Right? And one, this is like a grading card. Did you make an A, B, C, D, E, or F? Or I'm sorry, A, B, C, D, or F on your score. So example, an A, A, B, A, C, and A, D would be an example of this. What defines the scoring of a D? What defines the scoring of a C in this specific test performance? What dis uh, describes the scoring of a B? And so on. So descriptor labels and these are these can be found in balloon. you can use Bloom's taxonomy to assist you with this. Uh, bad, fair, good, and best example of this. Serious concerns may be used. Unacceptable, poor, unsatisfactory, below expectations, inadequate, emerging. Uh, in the fair section, whatever you're using to describe that. Basic, developing, competence, and good, on target, acceptable, satisfactory, proficient, meets expectations, and then best. Exemplary, exceeds expectations. Excellent, sophisticated mastery. So again A let's go back here. A B C and A D as far as assessment goes. So descriptor labels are essential whenever you're making levels with a rubric. All right, so making our first rubric here. So first we, uh, we need to figure out what the rubric is for. The next thing we need to do is identify the performance task that will be given, that will give an outline to the rubric. Um, then we need to figure out the performance levels. So very simply, I'm just going to simply draw on this here. It essentially looks like a table. So figure out what the rubric is for. Identify the performance task that will be given that will outline the rubric and that would be this right here. And then figure out what performance levels that you will be using in the rubric. And this would be the A, B, C, and D and F. Let's just add another one into there. So this is a five level rubric and then in each one of these change pen colors here this would provide the explanation of the performance level. Identify a cutoff score. So if our cutoff score is a B or above then that's what needs to be identified or if it's a C, whatever is decided for a cutoff score for this, and then um, we'll give you a grading criteria. So whether it be very subjective or it actually have a point spread here. And I'll show you on the actual rubric. I made this rubric that you're fixing to see. This rubric is 
an example for sharpening a pencil. Now everybody kind of knows how to sharpen a pencil, but what this might what this does here is this kind of pulls into play some areas you might not have thought about. So the first thing I did was make some performance tasks. So So we're sharpening a pencil. So in this, this was our performance task that we made. Were they prepared? Did, what was the quality of work for sharpening? And how was their time management skills whenever I actually wanted them to sharpen the pencil? So my cutoff score for this is a three. So all of these would say that the person is competent to sharpen a pencil. Now we'll read these because these are level four is above and beyond. I'm going to clear this all off of here. So again, the level three is my competent pay person, and the level four is above and beyond. So my cutoff score, very simply. is here and below. Now I'll give you an example of these. You can actually even number these. This is worth four points. This is worth three points. This is worth two points. And this is worth one point. Now in this sharpening, to actually pass, they're going to have to get three points, three points, and three points. And This is talking about grading here a little bit and in those three points that's going to be a nine out of nine to pass. Now this would be my cutoff score. They have to get a nine out of nine to pass. However, there is a possible of a twelve out of a twelve. So what's the difference between those two? And let's kind of erase this up and show you here. So this would be if they got 12 there would be a hundred percent an example four points was generated for this three two and one example so in all actuality a nine out of a twelve would be a passing score for this rubric all right so preparedness brings pencil hundred percent of the time is always ready to sharpen well that's excellent provides work of the highest quality sharpening pencil <laughs> and sharpens pencil excellently routinely uses time well throughout pencil sharpening to ensure things get done on time group does not have to adjust deadlines or sharpening responsibilities because of this person's procrastination level three was my passing score for this almost always ninety percent of the time brings pencils and is always ready to sharpen provides high quality pencil sharpening usually uses time well throughout the pencil sharpening but may have procrastinated on one thing group does not have to adjust deadlines or sharpening responsibilities because of the person's procrastination so that is what I'm considering competent so if the person makes a three in this one a three in this one and a three in this one that'll give him nine points total there are 12 points possible for this exercise. A 9 out of 12 would give him a passing score. That's what I mean by making a, uh, a cutoff score. But every level, as we'll take a look here throughout these, have been identified. In preparedness, a level 1 often forgets and needs pencil or is rarely ready to sharpen. Well, that's unacceptable. Level 2, fair almost always 75 percent of the time brings uh, brings needed pencils but sometimes needs to settle down and sharpen their pencils uh, level three almost always 90 percent of the time brings pencil and is always ready to sharpen that would be passing and level four brings pencil but is not always ready to sharpen it brings pencil and is always ready to sharpen my apologies so very simply, 
What's the rubric for? What are my performance tasks? And what are my levels? What's my cutoff? And from that, you have an excellent grading criteria. All right. Summary. Developing rubrics helps clarify the expectations you and others have for student performance by providing detailed descriptions of those agreed upon expectations. Rubrics allow faculty to efficiently assess complex products or behaviors. Rubrics have been defined and agreed upon by all of the evaluators, increase the likelihood that all evaluators will provide comparable ratings. As a result, the assessment based on these rubrics will be, the, will be more effective and efficient. If you have any questions concerning this subject or this topic, please feel free to give me a call. My name is Roy Smith. I can be reached at smithr at imsa.net or 405-219-7613. Thank you.